In 2018, our research group started work on building knowledge of the exotic fly spotted wing Drosophila, which is also known as Drosophila suzukii. This pest is becoming a pest of concern for berry and stone fruit industries around the world. Throughout this project, we've been working towards a goal of increasing preparedness of our plant industries for a possible incursion of spotted wing, as well as increasing our capability to respond to a detection should one occur. The research team has been collecting information and knowledge on surveillance and control methods and has also been developing models which will help us predict how well Australian regions and conditions will support spotted wing Drosophila and this will give us an idea on how far this pest could spread and establish. Educating potentially affected industries has also been a really crucial part of the project because it will be critical if we're going to achieve early detection of spotted wing and also allow us to respond to this pest should it arrive. This video tutorial has been developed to educate you, your colleagues or your students on the importance about spotted wing. This research has been a collaborative effort between Plant Health Australia, Plant and Food Research New Zealand and CESA and has been made possible with funding from Hort Innovation using the strawberry, raspberry, cherry, blackberry and summer fruit research and development levies and also contributions from the Australian Government. In this talk I'd like to summarise some of the research we've been conducting on the establishment and spread potential of spotted wing Drosophila in Australia. This includes a review of its current international distribution, observed rates of spread, some of the biology of the pest, and when and where it might most likely occur in Australia. This is a map of the current distribution of spotted wing Drosophila, where presence is shown by the orange circles. Over the last 10 years, spotted wing Drosophila has seen an enormous expansion of its known global distribution. Spotted wing Drosophila is native to East Asia, but is now widely distributed across many other continents, including Europe, North America, and South America. Interestingly, spotted wing Drosophila has been known to occur in Hawaii since 1980, but it was not an economic concern. On the mainland of the United States, we can get a sense of how rapidly spotted wing Drosophila can spread throughout a continent. Each state is numbered with the abbreviated year of its first detection on this map. The darker the red, the later the year. In September 2008, a sample of flies collected in a raspberry field in Santa Cruz County, California, was the first detection of spotted wing Drosophila on the mainland of the United States. By 2009, spotted wing Drosophila had spread further up the Pacific coast to Washington and British Columbia, as well as thousands of kilometres southeast to the state of Florida. From here, it made further jumps to inland states, where after five years since its original detection in California, spotted wing Drosophila was detected in all but eight states. Like the United States, first detections of spotted wing Drosophila in Europe occurred in 2008. Spotted wing Drosophila was first detected in Spain and Italy and continued to spread across the majority of European countries across the next eight years. Both incursions into the United States and Europe show how quickly spotted wing Drosophila can invade new ranges. So what is it about its biology that has allowed it to establish in these locations? Climatic conditions are a large determining factor of population growth potential of spotted wing Drosophila. If we plot population growth rate against temperature, we can see that it increases up until roughly 25 degrees Celsius and then sharply declines. These temperatures represent constant temperatures of lab reared populations across their life cycle but in the field, populations will experience short extreme conditions for days or hours which will decrease population sizes. Under extreme heat, the time until 50% of the population dies rapidly decreases after 30 degrees Celsius until populations at 35 degrees will be 50% dead in less than one day. On the other hand, spotted wing Drosophila is exceptionally cold tolerant and survives 24 hours under freezing conditions. Adult females also use a winter diapause strategy that lets them hold onto eggs until spring. We can put all of this information together, including some extra information on responses to soil moisture to estimate mean population growth potential across the year. Using global climatic data, we can then map estimates of growth potential across the world. 
Overlaying them with the current known distribution results in a good match, but also suggests other locations with suitable conditions in which the pest does not currently occur. Extrapolating models into regions without data is usually risky, but because our model was built from biological knowledge of spotted wing Drosophila, we have more confidence in its predictions. Unfortunately for Australia, there is a large area of predicted suitability for spotted wing Drosophila, particularly in the temperate areas where many soft fruit industries are located. This plot shows the average annual growth conditions predicted for spotted wing Drosophila, but of course this will vary throughout the seasons as some locations increase in suitability while others decrease. This animation shows that the conditions that support positive growth rates change drastically over the year. Of course, just because conditions are favourable for a little while doesn't mean that spotted wing Drosophila can make use of it. There has to be suitable hosts as well. The other bad news is that there seems to be no shortage of favourable hosts in Australia. Here are the number of Australian Living Atlas records for Rubus species, which includes Wild Blackberry, one of spotted wing Drosophila's favourite hosts. They are incredibly widespread across Australia, and there will be additional non-crop hosts on top of this that spotted wing Drosophila will be able to exploit. But it still has to be able to get there somehow, which is why dispersal processes are important. So how does spotted wing Drosophila move around? The obvious answer is that it flies. But human-mediated movement has proven to be incredibly important for the spread of this pest. Some of the best flyers were estimated to move 9 kilometers in a generation, but in one year it moved from California to Florida, which is over 1,000 kilometers away. So to predict how this pest will move across a country, we need to predict environmental suitability, local dispersal, and human-assisted spread. That's what's shown in this plot. In the first panel, we have a fly population in the bottom left corner where the level of red shows the dispersal probability. White cells are unsuitable. In the second panel, the population has spread to a nearby cell because it was so close, but it has also spread to a populated area from which we can make a big jump in the third panel to another human populated area. Let's put all of these ideas together. Here we have a model of spotted wing Drosophila spread in the United States that includes environmental conditions, population growth potential, local spread, and human-mediated jumps which increase with the human population size. Starting off the simulations in California, where it was first detected, the model can produce a nice fit to the United States incursion data if the spread parameters are appropriately adjusted. The real interesting part is that when we take the same model and run it against European data, we still get a good fit to the presences and absences through time without any more parameter fitting. We found that we could predict 82% of the state level presence absences in the United States through time and 72% for Europe without any more parameter tweaking. This is a pretty remarkable finding for something as seemingly random as a pest invasion and suggests that the large human role being played in the dispersal of this pest is making it more predictable. But all of this work is to give us more confidence that when we predict to Australia, we will get a reasonable sense of how spotted wing Drosophila will spread in the event of an incursion. The bad news is that if spread proceeds like it did in Europe and the United States, spotted wing Drosophila will rapidly fill its environmental niche in Australia. This is a simulation of spread occurring over six years with Brisbane as the starting point. There will be variation in the spread rates depending on when and where an incursion happens to be. In these plots, we have simulated incursions at each pixel. The color at each pixel represents the area invaded after 12 months for an incursion originating at that pixel. The left plot shows winter incursions in July while the right plot shows summer incursions in January. Incursions near cities, particularly those on the east coast of Australia, are predicted to result in much faster rates of spread compared with incursions at less populated inland areas. Summer favours southern incursions, while winter favours incursions in the north.
The global invasion of spotted wing Drosophila has been incredibly rapid, so we have a lot to learn in a short space of time. Luckily for Australia, new overseas research is coming out every month. Using biological parameters measured in the lab, we predicted environmental suitability of spotted wing Drosophila in Australia will span many growing regions in southwestern and eastern Australia. Within countries, spread has been rapid and is heavily facilitated by human-mediated transport. Incursions of spotted wing Drosophila into populated areas on the east coast of Australia were predicted to result in the fastest rates of spread.